right here. Come here, Yeti. Come here. There it goes. This place is just loaded with apples right now. Look at this. Dead bird. No, it was a grouse. Nice work, buddy. Finally got a fan on one. I don't even know what to say right now. I'm excited to be back here, back in the north woods, ready to go grouse hunting. And it's October 3rd today, and my wife and I, we're up north here, and we're gonna try and get a little bit of hunting in over the next few days. It's gonna be really warm to start out this week, though, in the mid 80s, but in the mornings here, it's still really cool. It feels great out right now. It's mid 50s. And we've got a little window here before the heat kicks on the rest of the day to go run some dogs through a spot. So we're gonna go turn a couple dogs loose and see what we can find. See if we can get into a couple grouse and woodcock, the spot we're gonna go into right now normally holds quite a bit of woodcock. And I'm hoping we're gonna get some good dog work and some good shooting opportunities and just go out and have a nice enjoyable walk with the dogs. So we're gonna collar them up and go give it a shot. You ready? Aspen. And we're off. A little hidden, but she's right there. Oh, I see your tail. <laughs> so you keep walking up this way and I'm gonna circle in here okay. and try and get to her left side and see if, if, if it gets up, if we can push it this way across the trail. Okay. All right? So just be ready. It's right here. Shoot it. Did it, where did it fly to? Um, see like right in this little clearing right yeah, here. Yeah, yep. Uh, yeah, I don't think I hit it though. That's all right, that's all right. She stopped, she's 82 feet, I can't see her. She's right here. Okay, I see her. Look, you see this fallen down log? She's right underneath that log. Mm -hmm. Do you see her? No. <laughs> okay. Come this way. See this thick tree right here? She's just to the left of that tree behind it. I don't know why I can't see her. She's literally right here. You see this tree? <laughs> <laughs> this tree right in front of her. I know there's like 10 trees here. I literally can't see her. You see this tree right, this thick one, this one thick one. one. Yes. Okay, yeah. Literally look right behind it. <laughs> oh, there she is. Jeez. What do you think it is? I bet it's a woodcock. You go ahead and just walk right to the dog. Okay. Yep, walk right through here and try and get up there and be ready. Dead bird. Did you get it? Yeah, I got it. She's got it. Yep. Good girl, Aspen. Here. Good girl. Here. Aspen, here. Good girl. Good girl. I thought I did hit that bird. Hey. Good girl. Good girl. Yay. Good job, Aspen. Yep. I thought I had hit it. Well, <laughs> we're a little tangled up <laughs> here right now. Here. That was a lot of commotion. Um, we struggled getting in here to get to the dog on point and then the bird flushed up and I shot. And after I shot, two more woodcock took flight and then another, a grouse even took flight. And we, so we got a little distracted and I could have swore I hit the bird. And so we kept looking for it and Aspen came up with it here and found it and brought it back to us. So 
We're on the board here. And, uh, I flushed it. In the North Woods. Yes, Bonnie was my little flusher there. The dog was on point, and I sent her into the what I thought was going to be the spot where she was going to kick the bird up and get an opportunity, and it ended up working out in my favor. She went in and flushed it, and it went right past me. So thanks for being my little flusher. You're welcome. Oh, yep, there she is right there. Mm -hmm. You see her there? Mm -hmm. Okay. You get yourself right about there. Let me play flusher. I'm going to walk to the right here and walk right in front of her and hopefully it gets up and goes that way. So just be ready. Be ready to listen for it, hear for it. And... There it goes. Up. Oh. That didn't work out. I can't believe that bird flew back that way. I thought that was really gonna get up and go right there. I know, that's a, that's a dang bummer about it. It's like, I feel like we had a really good spot to push that bird to give you a good shot. And for whatever reason, it got up and flew right over top of me. Usually they fly away from you, but that bird flew right over top of me for some reason. Well, that was about everything that you would expect in an early season grouse hunt in the Northwoods today. This morning, my wife and I had a really fun walk together, got into a few birds. I think we moved 12 woodcock and two grouse on that walk and came out of there with one woodcock in the bag and the rest of them slipping away. But we both got some shooting in. My wife got to shoot a couple times at some birds flying away, a couple woodcock. So she enjoyed being out there with the dog Aspen this morning. And like I said, it was just everything you would expect. It was thick, warm, getting beat up by sticks in the face, lots of bugs. And it was 80 degrees, mid 80s during the day today. So we ran that spot this morning. And then this evening, I came out to a spot and I ran Yeti here for the last hour of the day. And we came into four grouse and I was able to bag one of them that we had a shot opportunity at. I was shooting a new gun today, brand new gun today for me. This is a Weatherby, Orion, side-by-side. -side. This is their new side-by-side. -side. They just came out with it this fall. I'm gonna talk a little bit more about my setup with this gun here a little bit later in this video, but for right now, we're gonna roll into that hunt that I had with Yeti this evening, and then tomorrow morning, my wife and I are gonna get up again tomorrow and go and find some place to hunt before it gets too hot again. It's supposed to be really hot again tomorrow in the mid 80s again. So we're gonna hunt that first hour or so in the morning. And then I think tomorrow evening, we're gonna try and go out deer hunting tomorrow. And we'll see how that goes. Might try and video it, but yeah, gonna go sit in a deer stand tomorrow. And anyways, I'll quit rambling and we'll get into the hunt guys. Well, buddy, six years ago, we shot our first grouse together on this date. I think we can make a little magic happen tonight. Last hour of the day. You ready? Yeti. Dead bird, dead bird. I think I got it. That was a snap shot, but man, I think I hit that bird. Come on, dead bird, dead bird, dead bird. Dead bird, dead bird find. Good boy, good boy. Nice work, Yeti. Good boy, right here. Come here, Yeti. Come here. Give. Good work. There's not much of a tail fan left on him. 
he had a fan, but he lost it in the little tuffle he had with the dog when he went to make the retrieve. I just winged him and dog came up here and found him, made a nice retrieve on him. Young bird, this year's bird. Yeah, that was nice. Dog was on point right back here in this opening. Bird got up and I just had a quick little snapshot at it. And I thought I saw the bird tumble. And we came over here and it jumped up and yet he grabbed it. Made a nice retrieve on it, nice recovery. Good job, buddy. Good job. And we get one tail fan feather. First shot at a grouse with the new uh with the new side by side. The Weatherby Orion. New gun I started shooting this year. Just picked it up this week before I came up here. I like it. Swings smooth, feels good. Nice snapshot on a grouse. Shot a woodcock earlier today. I'm shooting open tubes on this. Skeet tube and an improved cylinder. And that was a little bit of a poke on this bird, but I got enough BBs from number eight's 20 gauge to knock him down. Yeti's on a point somewhere here. I'm just trying to make my way to him and find him. What do we got here, buddy? Let me squeeze by you. There it goes. It got up on, there goes the second one. Your guys' guess is as good as mine, but we're gonna go follow up and check at least. Yet he's on point in here. I just gotta find him. There he is, right there. Right there. it goes so last time you guys saw me I know I said there was gonna be a chance that I was gonna go sit in a deer stand but we had a marginal win for the spot that I wanted to go and hunt and instead of going in there and blowing it up that night I decided to uh, take the dogs out for a little spin and when you've got four dogs in the back of the truck it makes it an easy decision to go run a dog somewhere so I took Ember and Yeti out to two different spots I first ran Ember and I went into a tag alder edge, hoping that we were gonna come across some grouse in there. I've come across birds in there before, uh, but this time we didn't find any grouse. The only thing we found was two woodcock, but Ember pointed her birds and I made good shots on the birds. So we had a fun little walk together, the two of us there. So after that, I still had a little bit of time left in the day and I took Yeti over to another spot. There was a storm that was heading towards us. We had some rain coming and I wanted to go in and hopefully find some birds that were feeding before that storm hit and catch them off guard a little bit. So I went into a big apple thicket there's a ton of soft mass crop foods this year. Everything that could have something on it for the birds to eat pretty much does. Lots of apples, lots of berries, lots of acorns in the area this year. So I went into this apple thicket and we ended up moving 10 grouse. Yeti was pointing his birds. I was able to go two for three on shooting and then the other birds I just didn't get a look at. They flushed out in front of us or all I heard was them flushing and some thick cover next to us. But I was able to knock two birds down and I was pretty happy about that this earlier in the year, especially when this cover is so thick. So it's always good when a plan comes together for you. So we're gonna roll into those two hunts right now with Ember and Yeti from the other evening. And then I'm gonna come back at the end of this video and talk to you guys a little bit more about the new gun I've been shooting. The Weatherby Orion side-by-side, -side, give you my first impressions of it, what I've been liking about it, how it's been handling, in the grouse woods here talk about my choke tube setup the ammo i've been shooting this early season and i hope you guys enjoy that part of it so stick around to the end here i'm going to talk about that gun a little bit more but until then let's get into the hunt ember
Hey, bird. Ember was on point out in here. Woodcock got up right here. Nice, nice work, girl. Good job, girl, nice work. Dead bird. Good work, here, right here. Here, good girl, nice work. Good work, Ember. Bottom of the ninth, see what we find tonight. We're gonna go into a spot where there should be quite a bit of apples and it's just kind of this scrub oak and there's a lot of apple trees mixed in. There's some weather moving in and we're gonna try and find some birds that are out feeding and trying to get some food into them before this storm hits. So let's see what we find. Yeti. This place is just loaded with apples right now. Look at this. This is just the first tree I found too. A little cluster of them right here. A lot of them have already fallen onto the ground. Hopefully we can catch a few birds that are feeding around here. Yeti's been working something over here about 60 yards away and he just went on point. Let's see what he's got. There he is right there. What do you got, Yeti man? There it goes. Yep, there was a grouse here. Just took off in this thicket. This is what my shot would have been. Absolutely nothing. I just heard that bird take off. He's back on point. I wouldn't be surprised if there was more in here. There it was. I don't think we got it, but we'll see what the dog says about that. Yep. Whoa. Dead bird. That was a woodcock, I think. No, it was a grouse. Nice work, buddy. Good boy. Here. Heel. Yeti, come here, buddy. Nice work. Give. Come here. Hey. Give. Nice work, Yeti. Good boy. Nice work, Yeti. Dog was on point, and the first bird took off. And I missed it. I didn't even see the bird. I just heard it shot in its direction. Dog came back out. I wouldn't be surprised if there's even a, another one right here. I might want to reload. Whoa. Good boy, Yeti. But as I was saying, Yeti was on point. Bird took off. I shot and missed at it. He goes after it, does a circle back, comes right in front of me, goes on point again, and this bird took flight. And I thought it was a woodcock that took off, but he came back running with a grouse in his mouth. So I'm not gonna complain. Nice work, Yeti man. Yeti's on point again. He's 50 yards away in front of me here. Let's go see what he's got. A lot of apples in here. Nice looking cover. Dead bird! Yeti, dead bird! Good job. Come here. Good boy. Come here. That a boy. Good job, Yeti. Hey, come here, Yeti, come. 
Yeti, give, good boy. Nice work, Yeti. Finally got a fan on one. Got out in front of this one. Nice work, Yeti. Yep, he was on point again right out here. And I worked this edge coming up to him and the bird took flight. And I knocked it down on the first one, but I sent a second shot just for an insurance policy. Good job, Yeti. That's two grouse real quick. That's gonna wrap up our time in the North Woods the last few days of hunting. Ended up getting into a few birds, came home with a few as well, got some good dog work out of the dogs, got to spend a few days hunting with my wife, so that's always a good time. And I'm gonna take a minute now to talk about the new gun that I was hunting with for the last few days. This is the Weatherby Orion side-by-side. -side. This is a brand new gun for them this year, and I just picked it up a few days before my trip going up north to go hunting grouse. So I had a few days to hunt with it, and I just wanted to share with you guys my initial thoughts, what I liked about the gun. I'm gonna go over some of the features and specs about it, and then go a little bit more into depth into which ones that I like and why I like them. I get asked a lot what gun I'm hunting with, what choke tubes I'm hunting with, what ammo I'm using. So I'm gonna talk about those things as well for what I was using during this early first part of grouse season here at the beginning of October. The choke tubes I'm shooting, why I'm shooting them, and then the ammo as well that I was shooting out of the gun. So right off the bat, you can see that this gun has an English stock to it. So it's got a straight bottom to it and I've actually really enjoyed hunting with that. I haven't hunted with an English stock before but I felt like it put me and all of my movements into one straight direction and flow with the gun. Especially when I'm carrying it and go to mount it I feel like it was just all a straight seamless design. It's kind of a weird thing to describe but I really did enjoy hunting with this gun because of that fact of the English stock on it. It just felt like it gave me nice control and my whole body and everything was just flowing in one direction with the gun when I shouldered it. It features a swamp rib, and this was also my first time shooting a swamp style rib. Typically a rib sits up on top of the barrels and you look down the top of the barrels and line up with the bead, but the way this is set up with a swamp rib, it's kind of indented down into the barrels. So when I pull this gun up and shoulder it, I feel like I'm looking straight down the barrels already and I just gotta find that bead. And that's something I really enjoy about shooting a side-by-side -side in itself is that when I pull up, I feel like my eyes center just directly to the center of these two barrels. It's really easy to find the bead, and I really like how I'm able to aim up and center my targets with a side-by-side -side because it just gives me a clear line of focus to get on the bead, and it's almost like a, a middle target down here. So that's one thing on a side note that I really have enjoyed shooting a side-by-side -side for the last couple years. I feel like it just gives me a really good clear vision and target on the path. It's easy for me to line the bead up with the target and center the gun. And that swamp rib that's on this, I really do enjoy how it's buried down below the barrels and it just makes it easy for me to pull up and find the bead really quick. I do enjoy the double trigger system. It takes a minute to get used to shooting two triggers if you're shooting to one trigger. And it also is kind of a reverse effect as well. If you're shooting two triggers and then you go back to one single trigger, sometimes it takes me a minute to get used to back to that one single trigger. Um, I'll find myself pulling the trigger once and then trying to go behind it just as if there was two triggers there. Uh, but I do really like the look and the timeless design of the double trigger system. Triggers are smooth, easy to pull. They break real clean. There's not a lot of pull to them. Uh, and it's not a heavy, heavy trigger. Shotguns are notoriously known for having heavy triggers that you gotta really put some weight into to pull it and some force, but these have a really clean breaking trigger on them and it makes it easy to get nice, clean shots uh, without jerking or jolting the gun around. The overall length on the gun is 46 inches. That's from the end of the stock to the tip of the barrels and it has a 28 inch barrel on it. And I really like that 28 inch barrel size. I feel like it's a nice compromise between a good field gun and a good grouse gun. You still have a little bit of mobility with that shorter 28 inch barrel in the grouse woods, but then you also still have a good length 
barrel to be able to line up nice long distance shots out on the prairie or in an open area type setting. The weight on this gun comes in at just under seven pounds. It's like 6.71 pounds altogether. That's a little bit lighter of a gun than what I'm used to shooting. I'm usually shooting a gun that's in the high sixes, right around seven pounds. So this is just a touch lighter than what I'm used to. And I feel like normally with a lighter gun, I start swinging it and jerking it around just because I'm used to shooting a little bit heavier of a gun. But I do really like and enjoy the fact that this gun feels nicely balanced in my, in my hands. The stock itself isn't too heavy and pulling the gun backwards and it just has a nice fine line of balance between the barrels and the stock weight. So even shooting a lighter gun, I felt like I was shooting pretty good with this gun and knocking some birds down and it just felt easy for me to swing. It was just balanced really nice, even though it was a touch lighter than what I was used to. And I could get up on the gun and swing it really nicely and smoothly. And that's a, that's a huge thing, especially for shooting a little bit of a lighter gun than what you're used to. It has extractors on it, which I really do enjoy the extractors over ejectors on side-by-sides and over under style guns. I don't know, there's just something about reaching down in there and pulling those shells out after you make the shot and that smoke coming out and hitting you right in the, the face and the aromatics of it and just that, that sound of pulling those shells out. There's just something about it and I really do enjoy the extractors over ejectors. It makes it easy for pulling my shells out, throwing them in my bag. I don't have to worry about shells flying out or hitting me in the face when they come up. So that's more of just a personal preference of mine um, extractors over ejectors but yeah I do like the fact that this gun has extractors on it. Overall I think they did a really good job at the looks and the aesthetics of this gun. I'm kind of a, a guy that likes simpler looking things. Again that's just a personal preference but I, I'm not really crazy about guns that just have too much going on to them and they did a really good job with the stock, the wood on this gun, um, just a flat black look on the action and I think it all goes together really really nice and it's just a easy to look at gun and I think it's a timeless design as well. This is something that's going to look good for years and years and years and never really go out of style and I really do like that look about certain guns where they're just simple, clean, easy to look at and I think that's exactly what this gun is. For the chokes on this gun during this early part of grouse season in October when there's a lot of leaves, a lot of foliage up, I'm shooting really open choke tubes on this. So the first barrel I have a skeet tube in and then the second barrel I have an improved cylinder in. So that's gonna give me a really wide spread, the widest spread possible that I can get with my shot. And when you have so much foliage this time of year and you're just catching glimpses of birds going in and out of limbs, foliage, leaves, things like that, I wanna have as open of a spread as I possibly can. So even if I'm not right on the bird, I still have a chance to pick it up with my spread that I'm giving off. Now a little bit later in the year when the leaves fall down, there's not as much foliage, I will switch to like an improved cylinder in the first barrel and then a modified in the second, just because at that point in time when the leaves are down, now I can see a little bit farther. So if I miss close on the first shot, I can get, I have time to get back on the bird because I can still see it for a fair amount of distance and then get lined up nicely and give it a good poke with a modified choke. So when the leaves start falling down, I will switch over to a modified choke in the second barrel. But for right now, I'm just trying to keep my spread open as possible because it doesn't take much to take a rough grouse or a woodcock down. If you get a BB or two in them, you're probably gonna take the bird down. For ammo this time of year, I'm shooting eights and seven and a halfs. Now I'm not really an ammo snob, so I'm not using like top of the line field loads or bismuth or things like that. Right now I'm just using target loads, number eights and seven and a halfs in 20 gauge. So I'll shoot an eight in the first barrel and then a seven and a half in the second. You can shoot either or eights and eights or seven and a half and seven and a half. I'm choosing to shoot eights right now in my first barrel just because I have a box of them left and a number eight is plenty shot size to take down a rough grouse. So I'll shoot an eight out of the first barrel and then a seven and a half out of the second. The one advantage to the smaller shot size, and this is why I shoot a small shot size this time of year, is because the smaller shot goes through foliage, leaves, sticks, branches, things like that that get in your way this time of year a lot easier than the bigger shot does. That small shot just like whistles through that 
foliage really easily where a bigger shot will hit it with more impact and it's going to take more momentum away from that shot as it tries to go through things. So I like that smaller shot, eights and seven and a halfs this time of year because it just whistles through the leaves a lot easier and I find myself connecting on more shots that smaller shot size. And plus, a smaller shot size means that you have more BBs in your in your spread. So again, I'm shooting open chokes with number eights and that's gonna give me a lot of BBs in that shot and my spread is gonna be really wide and I'm gonna fill up my target nicely with a lot of different BBs. If I was shooting like a number six on a really open choke, that means I'm gonna have less BBs to fill that open spot. So anyways, that kind of really wraps up um, the gun the chokes I'm shooting, the ammo I'm shooting, um, my little rant on why I'm shooting smaller shot this time of year. If you guys have any questions on any of it or anything you guys prefer shooting this time of year or what your setup is, I would love to hear it. And yeah, thanks for following along guys. I'm gonna put this gun to the test more throughout the year, use it more in the grouse woods. Um, I'll be using it pheasant hunting this year and I'm just looking forward to carrying this gun in the field overall. It's a little bit lighter than what I'm used to. It's got a really nice ergonomic handle on it for the stock and the foregrip. And yeah, it just feels nice and comfortable carrying it. So nice, clean, easy to close action. Shoulders really well for me. I can pick up the bead really fast and get on target really easy. So I'm really looking forward to hunting with this gun the rest of the fall. Um, if you guys wanna see more of Weatherby's lineup, you can check it out at weatherby.com. This gun retails for 10.99 and it's kind of a, a mid-level price gun. And I think they did a really, really nice job on this gun overall for the price point on it. So you're getting a lot of, a lot of nice features at a nicely priced gun. So yeah, like I said, Said. I'm excited to hunt with it the rest of the year. I'm going to leave it at that, guys, and I'll catch you back out here in the Northwoods here. The best is yet to come still. Uh, lots of October to go, so I'm sure you guys are all out there hunting right now as well by the time you see this. So good luck to everybody, and I'll catch you out there next time.